Picture it. It's 1995. Two days before Christmas. No school for a fortnight and you're still in your jammies of a Saturday morning. Snow. Sleigh bells on the theme. No messing here. We're in the Peters and Forbes era. Christmas. Quite catty, ain't he? You know, with this brickwork, we could be Anne and Nick, but we don't want to be axed, so we best <laughs> no, not be. No. <laughs> anyway. As you'd expect, live and kicking hits all the notes, starting with the reading out of letters. Firstly, firstly, can we say thank you very much to everybody, and I mean, actually, everybody who sent us a Christmas card. Yes. Did a fire safety officer okay that desk? One spark hits the tinsel, Chucky's going to go up like Notre Dame. Because sadly, Barbara Windsor isn't going to come in this morning because she's not well. Thank you to everyone who sent in their pictures of horrible Santas. Oh, yes. Yeah! I can beat that look. <laughs> this is the manager of our Victoria main branch, Cliff Marsh. Musical guests are eternal, down to a three-piece after Louise went solo. Can I just say, what was it like, you know, the Pope? <laughs> Did you want to talk to Eternal on the phone? If you do, all you've got to... <laughs> can't think why she doesn't like the phone-ins. Who chose your name and why? Um, in what way do you feel that you've been blessed? Who's on line two? It's Oliver Knight. Hi, it's Colin Boyle here from Kingston. Hello, Hi, Colin. Hi, Colin. Hey, good morning, Colin. How are you? Okay. Is Kingston near Croydon? Yeah. Since Louise left you, do you feel it's affected the band in any way? Forget military might or architecture. The best measure of a civilization is what they offered as prizes. You will automatically win your very own live and kicking sweatshirt. Score between one and five points today. We'll give you a Paul Daniels magic hat. You'll like it, but not a lot. Uh, 11 and 15 points gets you a voice change cassette recorder and a babe film star peg. Though I pity the future archaeologist who pulls these rug rat slippers out of the soil. One way of scoring yourself these goodies was in Ellen Kay's interactive pig game. Are you ready to play Snuffle the Truffle? I certainly am. Really, these things were the invention of online gaming. Um, left, left back. Down, 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 When you complain about your ping time in Call of Duty, our generation had to shout instructions down the phone at some intern to move the joystick for us. Teabag is corpse. Say the N word. Ooh, so close to that golden mushroom. What sort of computer have you got? Laptop? Gaming computer? Get with the times, grandad. Look, this here is our email computer. Yeah. And we... Santa's email address is this. This is out of date, so don't bother asking him for a talking Billy Pierce doll. You won't get a reply. When I get hit by a truck and the paramedic asks me my phone number. TV in this period was obsessed with surprising real people by putting them on screen, and Famous for Five Minutes targets a girl at a panto starring a neighbour's hunk. <laughs> yes, Joanne, yes, it is you. We return to it later, where the poor girl's roped into a sketch. Well, the main thing in pantomime is pies. Right. pies. Lots of pies, you see, like that. You see. Oh, it's the way right. you take them. That's Life would be proud of the tonal shift which immediately follows Paul Chuckle getting a bucket of gunge on the head. Now, we all look different and we all like to think that we do look different, but if you suffer from any sort of facial disfigurement, you can find that some people forget that saying, beauty is within. We don't do Christmas! Get on! Get on! Whatever the time of year, best part of Saturday mornings was always Trevor and Simon. Welcome to Let's Go Nuts, the part of the show where everyone goes! Oh, yes, Simon, oh. are you feeling nuts? <laughs> no. Hungover guests with a 7am makeup call having to partake in this madness, though. Stop it! <laughs> you wouldn't know it. But that lad in the back is the best dressed in that whole studio. 
There's a special celebrity Christmas run the risk, except whoever uploaded this edited it out, which turns out to be devastating. Happy Christmas to Peter and Bobby there. Still, there have been better Christmas run the risks. Trevor and Simon do their record shot bit. The jam aren't even in the charts at all. What's the matter with young people these days? Don't they like modern music? Well, right, that's it. I'm going to boycott Christmas. And I regret to inform you, when this aired, it had been 13 years since the jam had a number one album. And as you watch this now, since Eternal's last album, it's been at least 24 years. Look how we sang, sing a cappella and stuff. I don't care if it's a cappella. We don't do Christmas. No, we don't do Christmas. Old three names Diane Louise Jordan shatters kayfabe. <laughs> I can't speak, I've got a snow on my face my mouth. <laughs> and I'm a bit deaf, I didn't hear them tell me to close the door. Uh, the skit turns into a self referential Christmas carol using their past roster of characters. We are the ghosts of Christmas past. I know who you are, you're John and Dougie Draper, the dry cleaners. We don't do duvets. Never mind, eh? Swing your pants. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, did you say ooh? Yes, ooh, 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 the funky, funky given. given, the funky <laughs> given. In a dark future flash forward, Richard Branson takes a break from carrying women to play himself in a telephoned in voiceover. Pickle is a great British tradition, of course, and therefore I wanted some very old fashioned premises, my first pickle shop. I found an old record shop, actually, that went out of business a while ago. Big guest this week, a boy's own. A whole zone of boys. And I've been oh, that's very kind of ah. yeah. They were hotly tipped for the Christmas number one with father and son. Would that make you happy? Oh, yeah. 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 That Christmas would bring a spirit to our Roy Andy, I have to say. Would it be a blessing from God. Well, it was Michael Jackson that year, so I guess God preferred him. They are, of course, doing the phone in. Ronan's quick witted, isn't he? Have you, um, decided to leave Boyzone and follow a less demanding career in cards and gifts. Can you see that? I uh, don't think so. <laughs> you haven't? No. It's no. not, no relation of yours or anything like that? No. It's a... Most of the questions are specifically for Ronan, and nobody's interested in the other lads. Him on the right might as well have brought some colouring to do. Do you recognise your friends at concerts or other promotions? Do you decide your hairstyles, and if not, who does, because I think they're great? One thing I'd blocked out of my mind were the Bob and Baz Wheeler Dealer characters. Hello there, I'm Bob. I'm Baz. He's Baz. And he's Bob. And we are Bob and Baz. And welcome to you, the discerning, discerning viewer. I was wondering the story of this kid and found Quell Surprise. He's from Sylvia Young and got his break playing Gary Barlow in Junior Take That. You can waterboard me and I'll still not be Googling what that is. Bob and Baz tore a tinsel factory. No, it's a, it's a, a metalized PVC. These kind of castings are just cruel. I too was under the very wrong impression I was hilarious when I was 15. But if any of that had been captured on tape, I'd be living in terror of it showing up on YouTube. These days, he must go out in disguise like the Ninja Turtles. No, 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 no. What is a group of lions called? A load of chocolate bars. Oh, forget it, my son. <laughs> Entertainment news section Electric Circus covers all the goss, like Ace Ventura 2, and Emma interviewing Mick Hucknall in a surprisingly big hat. What's up with that second monitor? While I'm speaking, I also want to be looking at my own fanny. Lee and Herring fans will be excited to see constant figure of scorn, Adam I, in the wild. Virtual Fighter has gone through another major overhaul, hot off the heels of the recent remix. This kid's like the grandfather of every YouTuber gamer. It doesn't win the battle over Tekken, but it's powerful, exciting, and you definitely won't be disappointed. Oh, phew, wasn't Electric Circus good? And Adam I, I think, is a top star. He ought to be... A 
good idea on paper. I'd forgotten how chaotic Peter's was. Sometimes it's like he's made of sugar. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man is on your telly very soon. He faces six enemies today. We offer you the opportunity to win your very oh, own oh, oh, oh. Frank, Spe Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. <laughs> Frank Sinatra time. You see the gap here. Look, there's a massive gap. What's wrong? Because, you Thank know, you. they don't like you. Oh, oh, oh blimey. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, little girl. <laughs> What's that old adage about whether it's better to motivate people through punishment or reward? If you win, you will have the chance to play stick or prick. Back to famous for five minutes. And with this lineup, I'm starting to wish it was me who got pranked. And here we are, no time for tricking, on behalf of Live and Kicking. You could never relax in the 90s. Minding your own business, then suddenly telly jumps out. And now you're in a panto with Yvette off Alo Alo, Patrick Moa, and the Chuckles. Here you go. You were famous for five minutes. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! 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 Here <laughs> in the classic Saturday morning pop video review, it's Trevor and Simon's video galleon with DLJ and the dad of 2.4 children. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Pity about Paul McCartney being in it, but there you go. <laughs> And so closes a snapshot of childhood, which in all likelihood is further from us now than the grave. Next week on the show, we've got Chris Agabusi, Alan Hansen, and also Mr. Blobby. That spells Indeed. trouble to me. Enjoy your Christmas festivities. Emma must have been glad to jack it in, freeing her up to be papped in a swimsuit every single New Year. I'm not suggesting that's how she pays for her New Year holiday but I won't sing a note of Old Lang Syne until I've seen Emma Forbes in a one-piece. Look, I've spent the last 12 months on here making jokes about spunk over old videos, but let's keep something in mind. And you must remember, the reason why we do celebrate Christmas, obviously, is because of the birth of the baby Jesus Christ. I think that's important. Very important. Not because... He's right. If I'm to balance out another year's mucky boy behaviour, we must turn towards the spiritual. While wrestling had the Monday Night Wars, we had the Sunday Night Wars. Songs of praise on the BBC versus Big Harry Seacombe with Highway. It's there we're going with the 1990 Christmas special. That's it, Harry. Repair my filthy soul. <laughs> you know... One of my clearest childhood memories is of being about five or six and singing rude words over the highway theme before my mum said, you do know this is about God, don't you? I shut up instantly, terrified God had heard me and I was now bound for hell. Here, I'll show you. Pooh, willy, bum, willy, fart Piddle and toilets and plops Oh, hold on. I've done it again. Shit. Now I'm really for the fire. Come on, Millard. Back on track. Hello and welcome to Highway. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. Lynn, are those your mother's cataract glasses? Bloody hell, he's blind. Another black mark. This week, Harry's visiting St Dunstan's, a school for service men and women who lost their sight, and teaching them skills like archery or ham radio. We're on safe ground here. Unmockable. We have a special call card, GB75STD. Want me to go to hell, didn't you? Thank you very much. Maybe get some hand sanitizer on, Sir Harry. But we'll be back later in the programme where I'll be joined by the choir at Hearthpear Point and the whole school as we together celebrate the coming of Christmas. <clears throat> the highway tour bus. I bet that's got some stories. Look after God's creatures without asking why. Taking care of
meeting the chairman of St Dunstan's, and have they dressed the snowman up like Harry? This might be the poshest voice I've ever heard. Yes, it is very. We operate, as you know, on two fundamentals. There's a great die-hard movie to be made with a siege at a home for blind old soldiers. And it's Christmas. A guest appearance from Dana, and the next POW entertains the group with some singing. Hopefully nothing here I can poke holes in. When we were two little boys. STD. Keith Barron shares a Christmas poem. There's a biblical reading, and Harry chats to a blinded copper. Um, one day I was sitting in the chair, and this guy came up to me and he said, you know, I believe you're from Rhodesia, whatever, and he said, you know, I've lost my eyesight, and he said, come here. And he put out his hands and he said, feel there. And he had lost both his hands as well. Even in all this ceremony, he still finds time to pay tribute to a fellow artist. Gloria, Gloria, in Just a perfectly normal hour of Christmas television. A perfectly normal chat with a chorister. And one thing I want to ask you, there's a very unusual tradition with the, involving the choir, isn't there? Yes, there is. As each year we have the boar's head procession, yeah. in which a boar's head is processed through the cloisters to the accompaniment of the boar's head carol. The boar's head in hand bear I, bedecked with bays and rosemary. My favourite carols? I have to say, Little Town of Bethlehem, Silent Night, and The Boar's Head Carol. Have a happy Christmas! Don't do it, don't do it. Poo willies, wee willies, fart! Take a good look at my ass. Our next special begins with trails for the upcoming festive season. <laughs> That's a funny program, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! loves Christmas. <laughs> well, he feels safe on the roads in all that snow. People can see him at the night time. And well, we hope you'll be watching us. Watching you. Watching us. Watching you. <laughs> This is your bit now. This is where you two, not you two, you two. <laughs> but the show we're watching is nothing like that. It's nothing like anything. It's fried. But the frog always legs. It's lovely, isn't it? I think really I've had the most fun, you know, shopping around over the last few months. Before it got adapted into a movie with Kid and Play, Southern's house party was in that off school with a tummy ache slot with the simple premise, here's a load of women chatting in a house. The show always gets compared to loose women, but they're nothing alike. And to continue my analogies with new media, House Party's almost an early version of Twitch streaming. Viewers are put in the room with people idly talking and pottering about. And a festive episode from 1981 concerns the ladies prep for the big day. I went round Tracy and Ian's the other night and they were setting up Neil's train. <laughs> I was having a and nice Ian said, time. I shall have to get this sorted out before Christmas. <laughs> Who's Tracy and Ian? Who's Neil? Doesn't matter. And on Christmas Eve, when I went to get all the stuff out, stuff out all the ones that had Simon on had been opened at one end. Ooh. And he'd been in them all. He's a <laughs> monkey. Other than a brief title credit... House Party completely ignores television convention. There's no announcer, no introductions, and not once do they address the camera. It's as if they don't even know we're there. Like we broke in but they came back early, and now we're hiding under the table, eavesdropping. I've had a look inside some of these, and there's earrings in one of them. Oh, mm. I was going to say, that one you've got there, Maggie, nice. oh, the, the decoration on the front, you could really wear that as a Christmas mm. sort of corsage, mm. couldn't you? Like could, they yeah. What nuts do you need to make a room? Walnuts. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't open with it. Highlight is when they go through a hamper. 
Why are we worried so much about what to buy her? Because this surely must be the perfect present. Look at this, though, for Sylvia. Chocolate with peppermint creams. I've been nagging her for years. No, but it's not there's a hand it. round. If people pop That's in, right. then she's got She something. won't hand them round. I say that. <laughs> yeah, Sylvia will just scoff them, won't she? Big greedy hog. I don't think this is meant to be a tribute of that scene where the washerwomen pick through Scrooge's pockets when he dies. Look out, excuse me, something big coming up. Sausage. Oh, Danish salami. Oh, gosh, what have we got here? Oh, Mary. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, look. Oh, oh that's, that's lovely. lovely. Hot. She can get Rog to cook that. Mm. Yeah, any like... Coronas. What are they, cigars? Cigars. Oh, more caviar. Oh, good. In my entire life, I don't think I'll ever say the words more caviar. Is one that is a hamper. That would help like somebody who. Because I, I gave one to somebody once with great, a great deal of trouble, and she said to me after Christmas, I had to give it all away. There wasn't one single thing I liked in the oh, whole. Really? But anything can go wrong on Christmas, and you have to be prepared. And you never, good. I never put makeup on very really. No, well, I, no. I feel that I am then ready to meet any emergency. Just never ever do it except on Christmas morning, apply my foundation in, in this particular way. When I'm completely finished, I run some cold water into the, into the basin and then put my face down straight like that. And then get a tissue and just pat it dry. And that sets it for the whole day. Five minutes this goes on for chatting about how she applies her foundation so it stays in place over Christmas Day. Yeah, you've got the yeah. basic makeup. You can add, you could might have a blusher that's got a bit of sparkle yeah. to it. Over 300 episodes must have filled that parasocial void podcasts do now. Feeling like we're sitting down with our mates as they gossip about people we don't know. And she has a feeling that because she's the mum, she's being left out. Which is the mum of the groom. The mum of the groom, the groom. Yes. Yes and give windows into their lives. I mean, this one's hubby cooks the Christmas dinner. He does yeah. it because he doesn't really like being at home anyway. And um, he couldn't really get his briefcase out on Christmas Day and start working, which is probably what he would do, uh, you know, any other day. So, and he likes cooking, so he just cooks the Christmas lunch. I'm... House Party ran for over a decade, with a brief 90s reboot featuring daughters of the original cast. And yet, if the man does one thing, like bringing in some shopping or something, it's, mm. it's considered wonderful. I believe in allocating certain jobs, like right now you... Who, me? Oh, oh, I'd love to. You know that 80s kids show which blended state-of-the-art special effects and British folk traditions? Sometimes magical, sometimes scary. Into a classic Christmas adventure. No, not that. This. On Boxing Day in 1986, aired a rainbow pantomime written by Bungle, Stanley Bates. The allocation of roles is sublime. You've got Zippy as the baddie. Ha <laughs> I'm the yellow dwarf. I seldom smile, and I never laugh. George, at his most gay icon. I'm George, the rainbow fairy too, here to look after all of you. And as for the dame, just ask yourself who'd make the best panto dame in the world. Evil Zippy steals all the colours, and with the help of Rainbow Fairy George, Jeffrey has to win them back, in trippy sequences calling to mind movies like Never Ending Story and Labyrinth. Then it's Orange, with Freddy done up like he plays guitar in Mudvayne. Excuse me? Pardon me, excuse you, if you can give me the name of something the colour of orange! Um... But all yellow belongs to Zippy, 
who promises to let him have it if he sings a song, before cheating and rendering him mute. No more singing! Stop your tongue! Will you help me to sing for Jeffy and shake him free? They do a great job making it feel like a panto at home, encouraging audience participation from the living room. Come on, boys and girls, sing along to help free Jeffrey. W w were you singing? Uh, pardon? W what? <laughs> now then, give it everything you've got. The quality of gags is clearly aiming to entertain the whole family. I mean, this is just great comedy. Oh, what a pretty dress, Dame Bungle. Ooh. Sat in? Uh, no, Jane. Slept in. <laughs> and look, the Christmas tree is black. <laughs> And the toast is black! No! That's because I burnt it! And you know everyone's in the spirit when there's an honest to god fart in Rainbow. Oh! 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 oh there you are, you, you naughty boy! Oh. Now come home and have your tea! You try and catch me, Mother! Yeah. Oh, you are a brave boy, Geoffrey! Are you alright? Yes, thank you, Mother! Oh. Be quiet, my dears! The folk vibes hit their peak with Jane as the green princess. My mother was Mother Earth, and my father Lord of the Green Forest. This is what the Lord of the Rings series should have been. Wish I was sleeping on a log as Jane Tucker sang to me while dressed like a pagan goddess. Jeffrey, you mad <laughs> That wasn't Ribena. I can only imagine it was never repeated, or else this moment would be part of all those discussions about early childhood scares. There's someone coming! But don't worry, it's just Rod inside. And there's another twist. Do you remember long ago you had a wife called Indigo and a daughter Violet so full of fun? Don't tell me, Zippy. You're my son! <laughs> Rainbow always ends with a song, but my big present to you this year is more of Dame Bungle. Swimming pools! Oh, you oh. cheeky boy! Cutie! Huh. Where are you, you naughty boy? You're having me on, he's not there at all. He is there. Well, I'll go and have another look. Oh, I better skip off now and find Geoffrey. Geoffrey! Geoffrey! Bungle! <laughs> Chuckles, laughter, smiles and titters. I put a rainbow on your knickers. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you naughty boy. Yeah, we wish you well. Have lots of fun. Happy, Happy, Happy Christmas, everyone. That just leaves me to say, have a wonderful Christmas and may all your Christmases be truly 3D rendered.